Happy Friday morning, everybody. Welcome to Mansfield, Washington, Waterville Plateau. Feels like October up here, man. It's late June. But I'm with another Ice Age floods geologist, this time Joel Gombiner from the University of Washington, PhD student. Let's learn from Joel here today. Thanks for joining us. Joel, I'm just going to pop to the top of this and get a big picture sense. I'll be right back down to visit with you. Okay. So the rains continue here in northern Washington. It's really green out here, just beautiful, peaceful morning. And up here on the top of this landform, I think we're going to pick up some breeze, but I just wanted to give you a big picture view of where we are. And then we'll start visiting with Joel. Drove a couple hours uh, up here to Mansfield from Ellensburg. Looking west to a few of the ridges above Chelan. Looking south. Breeze isn't too bad now that my wind is at the back of it. What? And looking north to the Okanagan Highlands, I think that might be Mount Moses or Moses Mountain. Still trying to learn my geography here, but I uh, was on a field trip with Carl Loquist this past Sunday, and Joel Gombiner was on the trip, and uh, I learned that Joel was going to spend the whole week up here, so he's he's been at it, doing some field work for his dissertation at the University of Washington. He's a John Stone student, and uh, Joel's been kind enough to not only spend a little time with me this morning for an hour or two, but also willing to be on camera as he works out some ideas. So Joel, I think your mic is hot. This is a brand new spot for you. Yeah. I think, right? I've never been here before. Yeah, okay. Um, and why did you kind of uh, target this particular area? Is this one of many stops you've made in this Mansfield area in the last couple of days maybe or not? This is day one of <laughs> okay. working in the Mansfield area, <laughs> Okay. at least in person. And uh, what are you noticing here uh, in amongst the sage and the, the wildflowers? Uh, why are we at this particular spot? So we are on the side of a, a streamlined landform. Streamlined landform. I picked out on satellite imagery mm -hmm. and labeled as a drumlin. Okay. And so we're here just to see what the drumlin is composed of. Did you label it a drumlin or did somebody else do that? I did. Probably some other people have as well. Okay. I mean, I only really know of one study in this Mansfield area. Is that the Larry Hansen dissertation from 55 years ago, essentially? Yeah, he um, he mapped some some drumlins in here, and okay. um, Covenin and Slaymaker had a study okay. where they they probably would have mapped this one because it's it's big enough to show up on the on the topographic map. Okay. But it's a linear feature on, on Google Earth or something. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's the landform itself, the, the shape of the landform that, that intrigues you. Yeah, it's a, it's a linear feature and it's, it's parallel to many other linear features in uh -huh. this area. We probably, I don't know if we can see any that are obvious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough, you know, it's um, tough. It's tough from the ground. It is. But if you look from the sky, it's like, somebody like God scraped his fingers across the surface or <laughs> or the Okanagan lobe okay. flowed across the surface in a particular direction. <laughs> so you see a drumlin on Google Earth and then you come out to kind of see what it looks like on the ground and it's it's I mean we've been here a total of 10 minutes but is it is it all basalt here or is there a combination of lithologies? Yeah we're seeing um, a lot of angular basaltic boulders on the yeah. surface. Okay. And then scattered amongst the basalt, some cobbles of granitic rock. Oh, have you got one someplace? Maybe I saw one just a second ago. Oh, here's one. Yeah, here's one. Okay. Yeah, here's one right here. Okay. 
And in general, the granitic rocks are a little more rounded than the than the basalts Thank that we're you. seeing here. Okay. They're also not all the same type of granite. Um, so, mm -hmm. so these clasts traveled traveled further. They came from different multiple sources, and this basalt um, doesn't seem to have traveled particularly far. It may have come just from a couple of kilometers to our north. Well, if you don't mind, I, I like this protection out of the wind, but maybe if you, you could come to the crest up here with me, we can just kind of talk regionally. Yeah, here we go. Here's another one. Talk regionally, and then we'll bop, bop back down here to the to the protected side and maybe look at a couple of the maps that you've got. And just to be clear, you're, you're just <laughs> day one, you say, but this is not day one of your field work for your dissertation, right? What? Where are you in, in the whole grand scheme of things with this PhD work? Well, I'm focusing on, on Moses Cooley and how mega floods got into Moses Cooley. So I've spent a lot of time in there and it, the information we can get about flood source in Moses Cooley basically comes from the sediment in, in the Cooley. So yeah. I've been just classifying erratics that I find in Moses Cooley. Just as we look down, oh yeah, there's some big boys in here. There's a nice granite. So you know I'm from, or maybe you don't know, I'm from Wisconsin, so there's tons of drumlins. Our family farm was a big old drumlin. Yep. And on the top of our drumlin back in Wisconsin, we didn't have big boulders like this, like exposed. It was oh, like really? this little kind of thick soils on top of it and everything else so huh. these drumlins look very different to me um i don't know where i'm going with that necessarily but well that's important i mean i live on a drumlin in seattle as well mm -hmm. and it has stratigraphy um and it is it is the top layer is is glacial till so mm -hmm. You get boulders on the surfaces of uh, those drumlins. Oh yeah, we're getting more and more exposure of this. this. What's in the guts of this? This is cool. This is we expect to see this, but here's some glacier peak tephra on the surface of Seriously? it. Seriously? Yeah. All of these tapioca balls. How do you know this is glacier peak ash? Which is what's the date, by the way, for a, a glacier peak ash out here? It's 13 and a half thousand years ago. Mm-hmm. So and how do you know this is can you just tell by sight that it's not Mazama or it's not St. Helens or just something? Just by else? the coarseness of it. It's I see. the only thing out here that's sand size. So that's that's what you'd expect to see, but it's, okay. it's good to note it. It tells you that this was this drumlin was already here and exposed by that time. Super cool. So the ice was gone by by that you know one of the things we're not seeing up here is any big haystacks yeah um, that came up on that I thought that was an interesting question on that Sunday field trip somebody mentioned from their limited uh, visibility through here they thought they were seeing those haystack rocks only being on ridge tops or <laughs> I don't know if that's true but I don't think that's true I mean okay. they're, they're scattered are there other drumlins that you know of that are half full of haystack rocks on top mm -hmm. of them or clustered I, next to them? The places I see them are on moraines and you see them in lines going perpendicular to the moraines just on flat surfaces. Really? This is again from you cruising around on Google Maps. Yeah, and that's been Google noted. Earth. That's been noted. Um, I can't remember if it was Waters or oh, Flint wow. who noted, noted those, those lines of boulders. As you cruise around on aerial images, in the old days, aerial photographs, in the older days, topographic maps, modern days, LIDAR, which apparently is going to be becoming available shortly, whatever that means, from this area, as well as Joel just cruising around on Google Earth and Google Maps on his computer, there's so many, 
it sounds like, and we'll see in a second on Joel's maps that he brought up with him. There's so many of these linear features. Oh, we got some deer for you. So when did you start your PhD at the University of Washington? What year? 2015. 2000? <laughs> wow. I'm a super senior. You're super. <laughs> Where did you do your uh, prior schooling? Um, I did undergrad at Columbia, and then I'm from Seattle. Mm-hmm. And did you seek out working with John Stone in this Ice Age flood stuff, or did that just kind of happen once you showed yeah, I, up? Yeah, I, I did. I knew he was dating boulders mm -hmm. with um, surface exposure dating. Yeah. And so I sought him out. And Moses Cooley was decided pretty early on between you and him that that was going to be your your emphasis? No. Um, that that emerged as I, as I learned more about the system and started started looking for an interesting question within within the Ice Age floods. I knew I wanted to study it, but I didn't know what aspect of it. Well, it's hard to find a bigger question than Moses Cooley, isn't it? I mean, come on. That's pretty interesting. So that's what I want to do with you here before we move on. I know you didn't want to spend this much time at this one spot, but it's kind of a pleasant combination of things. Um, let's find a clearing We're in down the here. here. Let's yeah, okay. Let's Thank go you. This way. The voice of reason. An interesting starting point might be to discuss Moses Cooley and why you're interested in it is it's a major Cooley that's not connected to these other channels. Like, aren't most of the rest of these channels in the channel scab land somehow connected to each other? And yet Moses Cooley is doing its own thing? Well, I mean, that to some degree, yeah but we're potentially in or near the channels that connect to Moses Cooley. Hello. So what? They're not necessarily as obvious as some of the other connections to the Columbia River, but I, I used to say that Moses Cooley is unconnected and now I think it is, it is connected if you just look a little, a little more closely. You son of a bitch. I thought we were going to warm our way into this and you just drop a bomb in the first two minutes. I love it. Oh my goodness. So is this called a channel area? Has anybody ever called this uh, channels that, has anybody called this a channel area? Yes, yes, this is called, the, this is the Mansfield, Mansfield channels. The Mansfield channels. Larry Hansen, who also did his PhD on Moses Cooley, described and, and wrestled with. So it, it's, just, it's just Hansen essentially that worked with these channels and what was he saying? in that dissertation in 1970. Was he saying that these Mansfield channels have something to do with Moses Cooley? Yeah, I mean, he, he saw them as, as somehow conveying flood water into Moses Cooley. Well, that doesn't seem to be what everybody else is saying. Yeah, I mean, every, other people don't necessarily pinpoint the channel network that conveyed water into, into Moses Cooley. So. Can we snuggle up in the cheat grass and look at uh, that map that you were giving me a sense of a second ago? I'd love to see <clears throat> something to help us get a sense of these Mansfield channels and what your approach is out here. And I'm still a little fuzzy on if you've been at this for a few years, why you're the why this is day one for the Mansfield channels. But let's 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 hold off on that. Great question. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> can, we, can we balance right on this? Of course. Uh, erratic here. Thank you. This is great. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm real tight right now, and this is beautiful, and I can even go tighter here. So okay. I recognize Grand Coulee. Yep. Steamboat Rock, whatever. There, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. And where are we? 
<laughs> or get us oriented oh, in I've, addition can, to that. I've already proven that I don't know where we are several times today. <laughs> you know, it but took us a while to find this. Here's place. Mansfield. Good. And we came down Road C. No, wait. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. We came over on 174. Good. Came down Road C. Yeah. <laughs> came down road C to there and then we came across on road 10 and we're I'm I'm now fully confident that we are exactly right there he's fully confident everybody that's where we are so this is your working kind of field map one of them this is kind of a, a smaller scale version and then you've got some blown up versions of this as well are yeah. these blue things the Mansfield channels you're talking about yeah so this is the Mansfield channels. God. So here's Moses Cooley down here, upper yeah. Moses Cooley. Yeah, so you can see they lead into it, right? What the heck? Okay. And I'm guessing black means moraines of some sort. That's not the terminal moraine, though? Where's the no, Withrow moraine on this it's thing? It's not really on here. Okay. I mean, it's 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 this whole right. zone. Right. It's not even a, it's not a line. It's, yeah. it's a large zone. Got it. And so, okay, I'm just coming to, go ahead. You were going to say something. Oh, I was just going to point out that this, this line is the, the divide between Foster Creek to the north and Moses Cooley to the south. The red line is a divide. Right, so water that is on the north side of that line will drain into Foster Creek and into the Columbia River. Okay. And water that falls on the south side of that divide in, in the modern world, drain southward into Moses Cooley. And why is that divide important to you? We can trace that divide. That divide's important because that's the divide that the flood water must have crossed to get into Moses Cooley. Presumably from Glacial Lake Columbia. From a, so the, the standard model is that it's from a Glacial Lake Columbia that's swollen by a sudden influx from a Missoula flood. Right. I mean, that's what I've taught for years, I guess. I would always yeah. say to the students, well, Grand Coulee, we maybe have a handle on. This is a major mysterious feature, um, but it seems like the general message is the ice sheets up here to the north. Uh, there's ice age floods coming down the Columbia River. Then the ice advances across the Columbia. You don't want to be too far though, because then you're blocking the entrance. Okay, give us more Foster there, Creek. please. So, if your Okanagan comes in here, yep. If your ice margin is is there, mm -hmm. then your flood can't go that way. We got a nice dam, everybody. So it goes up into into the Foster Creek Basin. And then the idea is that it fully fills that basin to the point that water starts spilling over this divide. And the lowest point on the divide, it's about 200 feet lower than we are now, mm. is over here. Mm. So what are these channels doing crossing the divide over here? That's what you're wondering. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Hansen sees the significance of these channels, mm -hmm. but since then, I'm maybe putting words in your mouth now, but since then, it feels like that story has not been re, uh, given more and more attention in the last 50 years. Instead, it's talk about getting water over this divide over here into Moses Cooley, based on right. the position of the Okanagan lobe. Right. And you're circling back to Hansen and his ideas that these channels are significant. Am I? That's, that's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. Am I heading in the direction I think you're heading then? Those channels look like they're coming from the north. Yeah. And, um, I mean, that's the direction a Missoula flood would come if it was crossing the divide. And the question is, why would it not cross the divide and incise channels at the lowest point? Mm hmm. Is that my phone? Oh, Joel, you're so popular. That's 
That's your advisor saying, why are you spending so much time at one stop? You got to keep moving. Yeah. It's a pleasant tone, though. That's a number I don't have saved. You've been working on Moses Cooley for years. Is this like a new line of attack? You weren't up here before. Why are you up here now? Well, what happened is... Okay, here's, here's, here's how this happened. I was working on Moses Cooley, and I was putting together all my exposure ages. Yeah. And one of my committee members, Brian, was looking at some of my maps, and he said, I need more geology on these maps. You just water? have terrain and data, <laughs> and I need geology. And one of the elements of the geology that encouraged me to include is the recessional moraines that Larry Hansen mapped. And so he sent me a copy of his tracing of Larry Hansen's moraines as a digital file. And I was aware of, of the moraines that he had mapped. I had never looked too closely at them. And so I put that in my mapping program and I thought, these look, these look generalized. I don't know if this is exactly where these moraines are. Mm. So then I took that into Google Earth and I started looking for the moraines mm -hmm. in Google Earth. And in fact, I was able to find almost all of them, more or less, where Hansen had mapped them. Oh, wow. And he did a lot of his mapping from air photos. Sure. As well as some field work. But as I was doing that, I realized that you could see all of these glacial landforms in this imagery in a way that I don't think anybody had mapped before. So I started mapping eskers. And as I did that, I started mapping channels. And then I started mapping drumlins. <laughs> And we're talking about hundreds of square kilometers. So I've spent the last six months making this map. Yeah. And now it's time to look at some of the stuff in person. <laughs> but this is the first step. I mean, I needed this framework yes. to make sense of any one point on the landscape. You can't really just walk around here and make a geologic oh, map. Oh, my because God, it's yes. Too it's too big. It's too complex. So you need. Right. So, so that's why it took so long. I needed to do all that work from the satellite imagery first. So are you kind of rejuvenated? Like you were kind of, you kind of were stalled out a little bit doing stuff in Moses Cooley itself. And this is maybe a, a new approach that might, that you're excited about at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. This is cool. I mean this, you know, with the exposure ages, they, they give you a number, but that number has uncertainty and you don't quite know how to handle a s small number of uncertain numbers. Right. The, I mean, these are real things. This is, this is something, this is a landform that I'm, I can see for certain that there's a streamlined <laughs> landform with boulders in it. <laughs> there's no question. <laughs> well, this is Brian so, Atwater saying, get out there, man. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Brian encouraging me to put more geology into it is, is why this all started. Well, I don't know. Are, are you? I mean, John had encouraged me to, to, to do that as well. So, okay. Okay, the wind's picking up, but you've got um, a nice looking map here, Joel. So, this is one of your kind of blown up maps, your field maps. And where are we driving here? So, we're coming along Road 10. Yeah. Which diverts around that drumlin we were looking on. We were just on that purple thing? Yep. Okay. And now we're coming along here and it looks like we're gonna go over the drumlin. Oh. And then this, this brown shade is yeah. a high standing remnant of basalt. And so you see those outcrops on the horizon. Yeah, okay. Just some exposed basalt bedrock. Yeah, so okay. I see that as the, the pre-channel surface that was cut by the uh, channels. Uh, so what I want to look at is the channel on the back side of that. Mm -hmm. And then there's another channel here. Right there. Is this that's something good. different than basalt? This. Uh, that's some. That's a, a sediment deposit. That's some kind of fan, fan delta, fan, or, delta. fan or who knows? We got to go look at it. To, yeah. To find out. 
North is that way. North is that way. Yeah. Ice flow is this way. And this is the divide. So the channel on the back side of that basalt terrace literally crosses the divide. Hmm. Water can't be coming from the east. These channels and these features are all talking about water coming north to north to south. Yeah. Gosh dang. North, northeast, south, southwest. Okay. All right. Well, let's go take a look. So. Yeah. I was thinking we would drive to maybe around Road B. Okay. And just walk out. Sure. Towards there. All right. Sounds good. Have you been able to kind of measure these channels? Or do you remember Hansen measuring them? Like what's the basic geometry of these things and scale of these things? I want to say this one is about a kilometer across. Okay. And 30, 40 meters to the floor. It looks like it's filled in with sediment to some degree. So mm. that's a minimum. And okay, so one of the things you, you don't see from space is granitic erratics well, scattered on the surface. This, this walk out here, I've yeah. been stunned at the amount of granite and I don't know what else we've seen, but non-basalt. Yeah. So the ice was here. The ice was here. But we have channels. We have channels. Um, I have that hummocky topography in there mapped as a recessional moraine. Uh, is there a linear trend to it, or is it just kind of these it's bumps kind down of there, bumps. low kind of yeah. little pearl necklace? I don't, I don't know if that's right. I mean, okay. Um, well, you know what my confusion is. Why do we have a bunch of running water in a place that was under the ice? I mean, so the two possibilities are that it was. It was a Missoula flood that was somehow diverted to flow through here. Yeah. But but as we were saying earlier, we're so much higher here than the lowest divide crossing on the east side of Moses Cooley. So it's hard to see how the wa uh, water. Why you keep getting water up. in here? Yeah. Yeah. So why do you carve something so high? Okay. What's the other option? Plenty. You want to say it out loud? Yeah, I mean, the, the other option is that it was carved under the ice. By running by water. By running water. By not the ice not itself. Not by the ice. No, ice doesn't carve channels like this. There would be nothing to... This, is not, a, this is not a glacially carved valley. Yeah. It's um, but this can, I mean, this connects to a system of interconnected channels. Okay. So that... Big erratic there. That's a big one. So your working ideas are that there's a bunch of water coming through these Mansfield channels. Yes. You're not sure exactly when. You're just visualizing the possibility of a hell lot of, hell of, a lot of water coming through these channels but the ice is here, and so these are subglacial flows. Yeah, there's, they're subglacial, or or like I said, they could be they could be proglacial. They could be next to mm -hmm. an ice margin, but the the problem is the the elevation of the divide here. Yeah, is not is not where water would want to cross. Huh. That's pretty cool. And you can connect these channels on your maps to through the Withrow Moraine and to the heart of Moses Cooley. Yeah. I don't understand it's, why that's such a radical statement. I mean, it kind of is. It's not been the company line for the last Well, you can decades. see that it's not obvious. I mean, this is a clear Cooley here, mm -hmm. and then it opens out into oh. a plane. Yeah. Good lunch spot to think about the uh, Mansfield Channel. Yeah, let's, let's do a little snack break. It's 
pretty cool to see in person. Totally. Especially since you've spent the last four months looking at them. <laughs> yeah, I've been on Google, a lot. Google this Earth. one's cool. <laughs> this what one the, what one surprises you about them? Ones. Like you've seen them, you've mapped them now, but now you're here in the flesh. Is it about what you visualized? It, yeah, it kind of is. Okay. More or less. Yeah. Do you think, do you know who Larry, have you met Larry Hansen? Is he still with us? He passed away from, uh, from cancer, I think. Oh. Jim O'Connor was telling me it was maybe 10 or 20 years ago. Oh, so kidding. I didn't, I didn't know who he was. Hmm. Well, his name keeps coming up. His, his thesis is, is just incredible. I mean, ah. his maps are amazing. It, it's a, it should have been published, you know. I don't know why he never published it. It's easier to get now. You can get it on ProQuest. You used to have to... Oh, I'll have to find it. I'll I can send you a copy as well. Yeah. It's got some really good maps. If I think about how wrong the field trip I would have led two years ago, uh, or how wrong the paper I would have published two years ago would have been. Why do you say that? Well, like I said earlier, I, I had written, there's no channelized connectivity between Moses Cooley and the Columbia River as a premise. <laughs> and here they are. And there is, in fact. <laughs> Well, I think Brett said that too, didn't he? It's not like you made it up. Like, and a bunch of people have written that. I think. No. Oh, yeah. You know that that Moses Cooley is a puzzle primarily because it's not connected to the rest of the channels. Yeah. So the only guy who didn't say that was Hanson, and now you. I guess that's what you're saying. Yeah. Huh. I mean, it's kind of, it's still kind of true. I mean, where does, what, where does this ch channel go? Right. It just goes out into the, into the plane there. Right. Yeah, so it's subtle. You're not. It's subtle. You're not, not, you know, we're, you know, Manson's right, Mansfield's right over there. We're in this channel. You would expect that this this would just get deeper and deeper and deeper as you go south and then just funnel gracefully yeah. into the heart of Moses Cooley and it does not. No. You know what I keep coming back to is that it's complicated, the geometries are complicated and at least I fall into this thought that everything's happening roughly at the same time and then you go oh wait there could be hundreds of thousands of years between one set of features and another set. Well, that's that's a really that's a really good point because, I mean, the, these bedrock surfaces do look somewhat old. Yeah. And these could be, you know, this could be a relic of a, a, something that formed during an older glaciation. Well, especially as you say, when you go down to the heart of Moses Cooley, there's this delicate moraine that's draped right across the floor of it and up on the on the sides as well. Mm -hmm. So, like I guess at least from my brain, I'd think of the excavation of the basalt to create the major features as time one, and then time two is bringing all this decoration in. Yeah. The eskers, the fans, the I don't know, even the haystack stuff? I don't know. Yeah. But to some degree that's true, but there's also clearly bedrock erosion occurring during the last glaciation because we see angular, fresh angular basalt in deposits. We just saw a drumlin that's made out of... Mm -hmm fresh angular basalt. I mean, mm -hmm. could that have been eroded from right here? Mm. So. Well, that's plenty. Thank you. You've been yeah. a good sport. I appreciate <laughs> it. Thanks. This has been a blast Yeah. to drop in and hear your thoughts and see this. The Mansfield channels. I'll never forget them now. Thank you.
Well, I'll just continue up ahead with you here and just think out loud for just a bit. I appreciate you joining us today. I, it may not be clear to you, but I'm trying something new with these videos recently where I'm out with folks who are just working out things in the field. It's not polished, it's not finished, and it takes a certain amount of guts to be on camera and, and, and share those thoughts. In Joel's case, there's an added element of working out some ideas that are not conventional stories. And the key, as he said, was trying to get a bunch of field evidence compiled to support this idea that essentially what we're asking is, what he's asking is, is it Canadian water coming through Moses Cooley or is it Montana water coming through Moses Cooley? And up till this point, with the exception, I guess, of Larry Hansen's work, the talk of Moses Cooley has been water from Montana, water from Glacial Lake Columbia getting sent that way. But to me, it makes much more sense to have the water coming from the north, the direction that you're looking. Thanks to Joel Gombiner, thanks to you, thanks to everyone who continues to work on these fascinating questions involving the Ice Age floods in eastern Washington. Thank you, I love you, and goodbye.